so we should be recording. You should see a slideshow in front of you. If you don't, please um, chime in. So welcome. This is the final host site preparation webinar as you get ready to onboard your Vista. Um, if you're familiar or unfamiliar with Zoom, there are features you can unmute yourself. Obviously, you, the folks here, have, you've already muted yourself, so that's great. So feel free to unmute at any time or type in the chat. But this is um, this is going to be informal. It's going to be a, a blast of information. Um, hopefully, it'll be around half an hour. We're going to try to keep it to just a, a little chunk of time before you we all enter our, our weekend. So we can start with some intros. We'd love to hear from you, too. But first of all, um, my name is Erin. I've been communicating with all of you um, a lot lately as you prepare for Avista. I manage the Vista program, so I'll be your primary point of contact with any um, questions you have, any issues um, as you begin to onboard your Vista and throughout the full term. Oh, my name is Callie Foster. I'm the program specialist here at MTCC, and I um, will have a lot of contact with your members. And if you uh, need to get a hold of Erin and she's not available, I will be your second point of contact. Great. So this should be pretty quick since there's just a, a small number of us on the call. So if you can each individually unmute yourself, we'd love to hear who you are um, and where you're located and, and who your organization is, just to get a sense of who we have around the state. Okay, I can start. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, hi, I'm Ellen Gettler. I'm the EL coordinator, the English learner coordinator for the Bozeman School District in beautiful Bozeman, Montana, and I'm excited to have a VISTA. Our goal Thanks, is Ellen. to help with bilingual um, translations for community resource guide and just to support the infrastructure for more access for disenfranchised minority populations in Bozeman. Great, we're excited for that project. Thanks, Ellen. Hi, this is Jen Barilli. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, uh, so I am the resettlement director for the International Rescue Committee in Missoula. We are the refugee resettlement agency um, here in town and this will be our first VISTA, so we're super, super excited. Um, our VISTA is gonna work um, to help us build the capacity of our school district here, the Missoula County Public School District. Uh, to better prepare youth and their parents for school here in the United States. Wonderful. Thanks, Jen. Thanks. Hi, this is Kit. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi. Um, I'm Kit Stevenson. I'm with the Bozeman Public Library, and our VISTA is also going to be working with our economic development director um, and we're working on startup and entrepreneur um, center here at the library. Great, right. thanks Kit. Hi, my name is Twyla Olkayo and I'm with the TRIO Upward Bound at the University of Montana and we are looking forward to having our VISTA get on board here soon. Uh, Judith, you're up. <laughs> All right, this is Judith. I'm in Bozeman. I'm uh, the executive director of the Montana Racial Equity Project. And I'm so excited to have a VISTA in uh, beautiful Bozeman, as Ellen said earlier. And <clears throat> our VISTA will be working not only to help us increase our capacity as our, as our organization, but we will be working with um, youth of color in the high school, the middle schools here, and also at the university to um, help them stay in school, um, help them get better grades, um, and uh, graduate high school and go on to college and uh, graduate college successfully as well. It all has to do with um, being able to push back on racism, bigotry, and prejudice, and um, because that all if because those things affect students so much that they end up getting poor grades they end up dropping out of school they end up not going on to a higher education 
So I'm really excited to be working with this, and so are all our partners. Awesome. Thanks, Judith. I think that's all the folks who got on the phone. Um, I know I'm recording this to, so that you all can view it again, and then some other um, sites that aren't able to join us. So we've got 15 sites starting around the state, really dynamic projects, as we just learned. We've got um, from Helena to Missoula to Bozeman to Kalispell, Col Colton, Troy. We're still recruiting and onboarding members. Um, for an August class as well. So we'll have kind of two cycles starting up this year. I actually see that um, we're just doing, just finishing the intros and Emily, I saw you just joined the call. Do you just want to say um, hello and what your name is and where you're located and what the VISTA project is that you'll be supervising? That'd be great. Can you hear us, Emily? She may be still trying to get on the call. Well, if you heard this and you're still working on it, please chime in and, and introduce yourself too. Um, Emily's based in, uh, oh, well, there, she'll, she'll come on hopefully. <laughs> okay, so we've got <laughs> all over the state. Let's keep moving. So Montana Campus Compact, um, so we're a statewide coalition of colleges and universities. And we're committed to addressing community needs through the resource resources of higher education. So that's us as a nonprofit and then VISTA specific. Um, so VISTA members are placed in community organizations, public agencies, or college campuses to create and expand programs. Um, our main focus is building capacity of your organization and ultimately bringing low income individuals and communities out of poverty. Mm -hmm. And the underlying theme, actually, that we didn't say here is through education. So all your projects are focused on education or veterans, too. So this is a little flow chart. Just to um, put everything in perspective, and I think this should be familiar by now. Some of this new information is not new information. We're doing a quick overview, and a lot of it will be new. But just because I think it, it helps, there's a lot of layers here. So this is a VISTA, is a federal, uh, it's part of a federal program, the Corporation for National and Community Service. There's a few different uh, programs beneath that. So Senior Corps, AmeriCorps, and the Social Innovation Fund. We're under the AmeriCorps umbrella. There's NCCC, they mostly do disaster relief, travel around the state helping with direct service. VISTA is capacity building specifically, and state and national is more direct service. We also have a state and national grant through Montana Campus Compact, so helping to meet um, address unmet community needs, largely around education, is uh, the focus of that program. So you can see the line down from VISTA, all state structures are different, but in Montana, we've got a Montana state office, and then the red circle to the right there is kind of where you fall in. So the intermediary, that green house, is Montana Campus Compact. So we, um, we work with the state office to approve your, pro to receive and approve and process your projects, um, and then beneath the intermediary are you, the VISTA subsite, or we just call you VISTA sites and subsite or site supervisors, and your VISTAs. It also kind of goes over the, the flow of communication. Really, your main point of contact will be your VISTA, of course, and us, Montana Campus Compact. So you won't really be communicating with our state office um, for any of your needs. Your main point of contact, again, is me and Callie. And again, please feel free to interrupt us with any questions as we keep going here. So as a VISTA overview, um, like we said before, the goal is to help alleviate poverty in your communities. Um, members serve full time, so 24-7. This is not a 9-to-5 job, although they typically do follow a 9-to-5 um, schedule. Um, host sites provide the day-to-day -day supervision, provide supplies, equipment, and training. Um, projects must build capacity and focus on indirect service, as you know, and um, this uh, aligns with our program priorities, which is education and veteran. Your VISTA service term starts July 26th and ends July 25th of 2019, and then we have the August class, which begins on the 20th of this year and ends on August 19th of next year. Um, there is some cost associated with this, so affiliates, um, it's the $6,250, and non-affiliate is the $8,350 per member. Um, so if you haven't been billed already, look for that from our office manager, Kathy Peters. Great. 
keep moving. Okay, campus community partnerships. These are vital to our mission of Montana Campus Compact. Some of you are based on college campuses, some of you are not. For those of you who are not, we ask you in your host site application or your VISTA project application to select a campus partner. So in your local community or somewhere nearby or some campus you have a connection with already. These look lots of different ways and we'll talk about them, um, talk about these partnerships and the importance of them with your members. But really it's, it's to help advance our mission. It's to engage, um, engage campuses in promoting and leveraging um, community resources. So whether that's through helping to bring in college students as volunteers to your organizations or to the VISTA's efforts, or even to have utilized campuses for space, for meeting space, et cetera, or events, um, or for actual content development of a program a VISTA is working on. We love to see those partnerships flourish or at least be a, another resource for a VISTA, a VISTA entering your community. So we ask VISTAs to, to meet with the campus partner at least once, hopefully a couple more times, Again, they look different in all different communities, but um, we do, we will be checking in on these campus partnerships um, throughout the term. So your VISTA assignment description, also known as your VAD, is pretty much a, a position description for each VISTA. Um, you can also compare it to a job description. So it describes the VISTA's role, including the over arching goal of their position. It also outlines specific objectives and activities for members' service years and includes the specific uh, CNCS performance measures your VISTA will report on. And um, that is a monthly report. Um, so we ask you to also understand what these performance measures are so you can um, support your VISTA in meeting those performance measures. And we'll talk about those a little bit here. Another thing we want to say about this VISTA assignment description is that it is the backbone of service. It's also malleable. We understand that things change, that funding sources change, that staff change, and that the VAD, you wrote that thing a long time ago in January, February, March area-ish. And some of those, um, those objectives or activities may not be applicable. So we can revise it. We want to just be in communication about what that looks like because that's kind of um, the proof that we show to the state office that our projects are in alignment with our priority areas and with capacity building, and that there will be, that they touch on the performance measures and reports. So again, that can change. We wanna just be updated if there are any changes to make sure, again, we're still in compliance. Speaking of compliance, so we've got some regular things that we're gonna be checking in on throughout a year, really monthly items mostly. These will all be emailed out so you don't have to you know, memorize this list or write it down. Every, everything that's due to our office, is, there's gonna be a prompt via email or some other way. In terms of members, and our, your member will you know, get to understand this in trainings and um, other communications, is this monthly report that, Carl, that Kelly mentioned that'll be based on these performance measures um, from the government. Um, that's going to be a Google form. There's also work plans, which will be helpful, hopefully, in having and facilitating regular meetings and checking in. Basically, it's um, breaking that VAD, that VISTA assignment description, into bite-sized chunks or month-sized chunks that'll help plan um, and progress a VISTA uh, tenure moving forward. So those will be items that they'll submit monthly to us. There's also an activity log, and we have, an, we have a um, model of what this looks like, but that's kind of a daily thing that VISA will, will use really for them, but also to track personal and medical leave, which again, we'll get into. So in terms of you, host site supervisors, just signing off on those activity logs, reviewing those reports and work plans, um, just to be familiar with what it, um, what it looks like to run and to report on a, a VISTA project. Also submitting VISTA personal and medical days, so keeping track of um, time that VISTA take off. And we, again, we'll go into more detail about that specifically. There's also an end of term impact report. So VISTA will reflect on their full service term um, and that's helpful for us in reporting up the chain and applying for new funding too and, and just sharing stories. It's always important to, to share stories. So that's, that document helps us do that. We also have site visits, so it's, um, Great, we get to travel around the state and see all these projects in action and meet with you all in person. So we'll do an in-person site visit sometime in the fall 2018, usually October, November, and then a webinar check-in in the spring. 
Okay, so monthly work plans. So we require that visitors create monthly work plans to outline SMART goals for the month. Um, and we ask you to review those work plans with your VISTA, and then they will submit this to our VISTA leader, um, who just started in our office, and her name is Mary Elizabeth. Um, and I'm sure you have all heard of SMART goals. We want it to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. Great. Cruising through. So this is the daily activity log. This will be provided to members They'll receive a member handbook basically when they come to training next week. And this will, again, we say to daily figure, fill this out. We won't collect this, but we do require that it stays on site for seven years. Sorry, <laughs> that's kind of a, a compliance thing. Basically, if we were ever to be audited, if you all were to be visited, um, it's proof that we, we did allocate resources, just the resources to you. So again, this is for hours, activities, personal medical leave. It sounds funny because we don't actually log hours, but again, it's a reference really for you to be monitoring if the VISTA is serving something closer to 30 hours, maybe you want to step it up, or 60 hours, maybe you want to cut back. We understand that some weeks, some months are going to be heavier than others depending on what you have going on, but should be roughly 40 hours a week. Um, and this can also help with the reporting, kind of looking back on what, what they did um, and definitely that personal medical leave. You can use this form to then complete the form that you'll need to submit to us with the personal medical leave. Okay, so personal and medical leaves. Um, each VISTA is granted 10 personal leave days and 10 medical leave days. Um, they can also take advantage of a one-week emergency leave for death or critical illness in immediate family. And the national or the Corporation for National Community Service will pay for round trip transportation. Um, also, national holidays. Um, these are holidays that your office observes, um, and it is your responsibility to ensure your VISTA follows these guidelines. So we ask that you review these guidelines with your VISTA. Um, this is the um, personal and medical leave form to be completed each month. Um, and this is just what it looks like. And I believe you said it's a Google form. Yeah, it's a Google form. It's a Google form. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. So outside employment and education, folks, um, it's a new-ish allowance that VISTAs can um, seek outside employment, um, which is great because they don't get paid a whole lot. So really, as long as it, you have to approve it, there's a form that is available for members to complete, um, and that's gonna be in their member handbook. You have to approve it. It cannot conflict with service. So say if the employment starts at 2 p.m. or something to five, that doesn't sound very realistic. Um, unless it's a circumstance you work out where they're making up hours or you know the members work Saturdays regularly or serving Saturdays regularly. That's a, um, we really don't want to, the service is the main priority. So we want the VISTA to be focusing on that. They also, um, there can't be a, um, conflict, what is the word I'm thinking of? Come on, brain. <laughs> I don't remember. But basically, it's um, if a VISA can't seek employment at your site. So if they have your at MSU Bozeman, um, VISA cannot find employment at MSU Bozeman or within your organization, et cetera. Conflict of interest. There we go. Thank you, brain. <laughs> As for education, same-ish same rules. Um, Full-time is not allowed. People can be taking classes. Uh, as long as it's approved by you, it's not a formal process. Um, we don't have a specific form, but um, we do want to know about it. So if, if your this is taking courses, that's great, um, and let us know. Okay, prohibitions. Um, so with every national service program, there are prohibited activities. So while your member is serving, they cannot engage in political um, activism, religious activities, union organizing, providing abortion services or referrals, alcohol consumption, and safety risk. Um, so that just means participating in activities that pose a significant safety risk to clients or to themselves. And one thing that we like to say is um, a member can engage in these things if it's in their own time, in their own clothing, and on their own devices. So again, that's um, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. But it's hard, you know. You really can't. It's it's tough because Vista service is 24/7. Technically, folks are in service 24/7. But really, we look at that as when they're 
when they're helping with an effort for you or when they're wearing their Vista gear or on, a, on a, their service site computer, they cannot be engaging in these things. It's complicated, so we're available to, um, to help with this. We know that, um, well, I'm not gonna get into politics, but <laughs> if people wanna engage politically, that's okay, again, as long as it's on their own, with their own time, et cetera. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit more into Vista support now. So that was the basics of compliance about our monthly reports, about what's due in our offices and the basic structures throughout the year of um, kind of benefits to members. So now we're gonna get dig into a little bit more into supporting Vista members. So what can you do to support your Vista? Really you can do, um, a lot of different things. Assisting and locating housing is huge. Hopefully all your members have solidified housing. We've been trying to help with this process too, um, but if there's uh, any issues at all, we, we, we can definitely help as well. But housing is continuing to be harder and harder around the state and around the country, so that's a huge um, plus is helping with housing. You can take your wrist out to lunch or to dinner or, you know, buy them a plant. <laughs> really, it's, we can't be giving members cash that's against the policies or gift cards. But there's lots of other ways that you can um, dote on your member. Clothing too, this is we'll be receiving a bunch of swag, t-shirts, um, sweatshirts eventually, pens, pins from Vista, from um, Vista overall and from Montana Campus Compact. It's great for you to do that too. Um, promotional items, providing recognition, of course, it's really huge. Um, mentioning them in newsletters, um, in staff meetings to your community, Etc. and making them feel part of your team. I'm not going to get through that note. Okay, yeah. so Vista trainings, um, that actually starts next week. Yay. So we um, are going to be in Helena at a state and MTCC PSO um, at Carroll College, and we will provide them information about Vista in general, and then us as um, an organization. And then where you come in is the on-site orientation and training. So that is, is supposed to help with the first three weeks of them in the office, and it establishes an effective working relationship between the VISTA and you, um, other host site staff, and the community. Uh, so we broke it down per week, and then we also have some resources that we will be providing you and the VISTA to help with on-site orientation and training. And that's, this training guide was actually sent in an email to each of you individually. We really encourage you to open that up. This is we'll be receiving that on site as well. And it's, I think it's geared in terms of um, in terms of Vista's perspective entering your community. But it'd be really great for you to get a sense of what that looks like and to help facilitate that process along. As you're crucial because you're in the site, you're in the community. Lots of folks are coming from outside of Montana or outside of your community, and um, we'll need a lot of help in this training process. So site supervisor influence, we found, there's data that shows this, and we found it from our own experiences that our strongest sites have supervisors who take responsibility for the VISTA project, so who really understand that assignment description, understand capacity building, understand what the VISTA is there to do and how it's gonna be helpful. Really the purpose of VISTA, it's a one-year project, it can become three, really we like to see um, a project building on each year and growing new capacity. Um, for an organization each year, but that's going to have lasting effects. That it's not kind of a one year and done. We just needed you for this temporary resource, um, and then we're going to be good without you. Basically, it's, it's building something new, and to highlight the importance of that newness, um, always feel someone who's coming from the outside feel like they're contributing um, in a bigger way than just their one year. Communication is huge. Communicating regularly, we love to see supervisors supervisors setting up weekly meetings for a half hour, an hour however long you, you can manage in your busy lives, but especially in the first couple months when a, a VISTA is new and, and learning the ropes, that one-on-one um, -on -one time can be really helpful. Investing in a VISTA's professional development is also big. We see uh, VISTA service as kind of a, a two, or this program is a two-sided coin. So one, importantly, a VISTA is there to, to get things done for you and your organization. That's the motto of AmeriCorps, to get things done and to go where you're needed is another kind of tagline slogan and so that's obviously a big priority we want this, this to have a huge impact on your site we also know that lots of these folks are 
fresh out of college and they're new to the workplace. And so kind of um, facilitating someone's upbringing, someone's coming of age, I guess, into the workforce and hopefully kind of um, molding them into a civically engaged student is a big component of a civically engaged person. So to go on and, and continue to do good for communities and um, wherever they end up. So that's going to probably require some sort of professional development, kind of understanding what their needs are, if it's if it's professional etiquette, if it's um, you know volunteer recruitment. We provide some of those resources too, but we we definitely hope that you um, you're you're assessing the vistas needs or what can make them a more um, holistic or performing individual. Mentorship is a big component too. Um, again, helping this, guiding this vista, not just to in, in their professionalism, but in your community, with the project to Montana. Again, all this stuff can um, maybe new to these to these folks. And I said this already, but appreciating the purpose of vista. So why vista is, is around um, digging into it and understanding more about that as well. Some buy-in stuff that we want. Best practices. So again, we're more into these best practices. So we hope that you expect, especially in the beginning, that five to 10% of your time per week is will be devoted to supervising this VISTA. That may cater off, um, but the more you put in in the beginning is really gonna set your VISTA up for success and to be cruising by the, the last, the final six months or so. Helping them assimilate, that means, you know, showing especially free events in your community, um, because these folks don't make a whole lot of money. Uh, free re resources are great. Taking them out to lunch, um, again, that's not a requirement, but really just ways showing that you um, you care about them getting invested in the community outside your project. We see a lot of uh, VISTAs stay on, either with host sites, if that's possible, or in their communities. And that's a great sign of a supervisor really making a, creating a welcoming environment for members um, to feel like Montana is their home. Um, we're actually both products of that. <laughs> I was, uh, I stayed on at my host site after my two years of business service. And Callie also stayed on, it does. and we're both transplants from other states. And some of you are too, I know that um, just we've got some VISTA alums as supervisors too, which is awesome. We can't um, say this enough, but treating members as staff, they're national service members. VISTA stands for Volunteer in Service to America. Um, so they're, you know, they're national service members, but of course treating people as staff, inviting them to staff meetings, retreats, other other events or, or um, happenings as other staff, um, incorporating them, the folks in those are, are great. And to get to know your supervision style, kind of thinking about how you want to engage with these members and knowing more about yourself um, always helps too. Uh, so where you can find resources. Um, Vista Campus is a great resource for not only you, but your members as well. So there's a link there for you. It has a Vista Supervisor Manual you can review, a member handbook, um, free webinars. Um, which include an on-site orientation and training, so Q&A, and then August 30th at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, um, there is a free webinar that you can register and attend um, to help you out um, with more information. Yeah, and I think it's a really, well, I know, it's a very simple process. You basically have to um, enter your email and create a password, and then you have access to the handbook um, and to all sorts of different resources, including webinars. So let's actually, since it's, we want you to be thinking of, since you have a week, um, since your members will join you on the 30th, give a, um, a little bit of time to think about how you want to orient your VISTA with that orientation training plan and on your own, what you want to do. Um, be thinking of that. <laughs> We've got some other slides that I know said we'd wrap this up in a half an hour, so we'll try to respect that. Um, but if you want to share at the very end, for now, we'll keep moving quickly through these last few slides. Um, another important thing is highlights an acknowledgement of your national service member and just national service in general. So we'd love to hear your great stories, see your photos, um, you know, if you're sharing anything around your community or within your organization in terms of like a newsletter, press release, blog, social media, we love to see photos that we can then share with our um, campus affiliates and around our office. Um, we highly encourage that um, of not only the VISTAs, but supervisors as well. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that uh, national service funding is um, 
but we've seen it come and go on the chopping block and we're still around. We have funding for this this year and it's been a, um, all over, but there's been bipartisan support for national service programming, but you never know when it, when it could be cut. So sharing these stories are so important and we gather them through the year-end impact reports, um, blog, we love receiving these receiving blog posts. So like Callie said, this stuff is really important. We wanna continue um, promoting and advocating for national service because we believe in it, and we hope that you do too. Okay, so the timeline for these first few weeks, these first crucial few weeks of your VISTAs experience is um, we've got a lot of training that this first week. So like Kelly mentioned, we've, uh, we're next week, we're in Helena, we'll meet your folks, we'll have four full days with them, which we're excited about, just um, state training in Montana Campus Compact specific training, really preparing people to enter their communities, hit the ground running. Um, that's gonna be next Tuesday to Friday. The first day with you will be next Monday, so two Mondays from now, July 30th. And that's really when we wanna see that on-site orientation begin. So that packet of information of the first three weeks of service for you and your VISTA to be diving in. It's a great starting point for you. We'll also have check-ins. Um, I think this is on the calendar that we sent out to, and we, we're making some changes to that calendar, so we'll send you an updated one as soon as we can. Um, but definitely to make sure that those dates are on your on your radar and on your VISTA's radar will be hugely helpful. So I will be making phone calls to you all, see how things are going, really um, three weeks into service. So theoretically at the close of this on-site orientation training plan. Um, and that's gonna be a great time for you to ask me questions. Of course, you can call me whenever, um, any questions you have. And then the, our VISTA leader will be making similar phone calls to your VISTAs to see how things are going in those first few weeks. Now we've got monthly calls. We'd love for you to join that first one. They're on the third Thursday of every month. It'd be a good opportunity for you all to see who else is in the in the room, so to speak, around the state, um, and what these folks will be doing to come to build a community for for your Vista and, and for you too. And two minutes over, not bad. <laughs> that's that's what we have. So we'll stay on the line if people have questions. Um, Thank you so much for, for bringing on a service member, and for partnering with us. We're really excited to meet all of these VISTAs next week and to help them enter your community. So thanks again for your time, and uh, we'll stay on the line for a little longer if anyone has questions. I'm going to end the recording.